Today, I'm thrilled to discuss FDA's Office of Pharmaceutical Quality, or OPQ, and explain the recent and crucial restructuring of the organization. Quite simply, everyone deserves confidence in their next dose of medicine. Pharmaceutical quality assures the availability, safety, and efficacy of every dose. Hi, I'm Mike Kopcha, the director of OPQ, and our mission is to assure that quality medicines are available to the American public. This mission requires excellence, and to maintain excellence, it's essential for OPQ to adapt to ever-changing healthcare landscape and embrace organizational evolution. Scientific and technological advancements are transforming medicine, presenting OPQ with an opportunity to drive positive change to improve public health. In OPQ's reorganization, we strive for four critical goals. The first being to streamline our processes and systems for enhanced efficacy, eliminating operational redundancy, as well as bottlenecks. The second is to embrace new technologies and tools as the key to staying ahead in a dynamic environment. Third, to actively pursue innovation to make a meaningful difference in patients' lives. And fourth and finally, to adapt and adopt a culture of continuous improvement in which we are consistently seeking better and more efficient ways of working and advancing the field. It is important to note that public stakeholders should feel little or no immediate impact of the OPQ reorganization as many of the changes are focused on fostering internal improvements. Before we delve into the reorganization, let's first understand the foundation of OPQ and its mission. Established in January 2015 as a pivotal office within the Center for Drug Evaluation and Research, or CEDAR, OPQ has quickly risen as a global leader in pharmaceutical quality regulation. Central to our approach is a concept of one quality voice emphasizing FDA's commitment to a cohesive human drug quality program across all product types and manufacturing sites, both domestic and international. Our work includes the strategic integration of assessment, inspection, surveillance, policy, and research to enhance pharmaceutical quality across the product life cycle. Let's take a look at the drug product life cycle. A new drug is born the moment it is discovered. Its life begins to take shape as a company commits to develop it commercially and apply it to clinical trials. Successful development leads to a drug marketing or licensing approval by FDA. If it is an innovator drug, it lives through a period of market exclusivity in which the innovator company monitor the product on the market. At the same time, Generic companies may begin the development of a generic version of the drug, and the same can be said for biosimilar companies. It's important to note that manufacturers of new and generic drugs often make changes after approval, for example, to improve quality assurance or supply chain. Following the period of exclusivity for the innovator drug and biological products, Generic products and biosimilar products can be approved by FDA. All drug products on the U.S. market continue to be monitored after approval. All prescription drugs are held to the same quality standards. For example, the regulatory quality expectations for new and generic drugs are the same, and they are expected to have the same clinical effect and safety profile when administered to patients. The global nature of drug manufacturing adds layers of complexity to the regulatory process. CEDAR's product catalog contains more than 140,000 drug products and manufactured in nearly 5,000 facilities worldwide. All facilities must comply with regulatory requirements to maintain product quality. OPQ's quality functions work across a life cycle of a drug and across the globe. Now that you understand the life cycle, let's examine those core functions. Collaboration is critical to OPQ's core functions of assessment, inspection, surveillance, policy, and research. Let's take a closer look at each function. 
Our quality assessment of drug marketing and licensing applications involves a comprehensive team of experts. The quality assessment assures that an approved product can safely deliver the therapeutic benefit to the patient, as stated in the label. OPQ supports the assessment of every type of human drug application, which includes investigational new drug applications, or INDs, new drug applications, NDAs, abbreviated new drug applications, ANDAs, biologics license applications, BLAs, and application supplements. Quality assessment involves experts in drug substance, drug product, manufacturing, which includes process, facility, and microbiology considerations, and biopharmaceutics, which is the relationship between the properties of a drug and its action, and doesn't end at initial application approval. OPQ receives thousands of supplemental submissions concerning proposed changes in already approved drug applications. Assessors capture and manage knowledge throughout the product's life cycle, which helps identify and mitigate risk. Facility inspections are an important tool for regulating quality. Pre-approval inspections are needed based on risk to assure that a manufacturing facility named in an application is capable of manufacturing in conformance to CGMP requirements. OPQ conducts pre-license inspections for biotechnology products and participate in pre-approval inspections for new and generic drugs with FDA's Office of Regulatory Affairs, ORA, when necessary. In the COVID era, we also evaluate facilities via remote regulatory assessments using alternative tools to traditional inspections, when appropriate. This has enabled OPQ to provide facility recommendations in a changing world, as proven by the recent pandemic. Remote regulatory assessments provide an option for risk-based, targeted, and strategic facility evaluations to make efficient use of regulatory resources. Continuous surveillance of CEDAR regulated sites and products is paramount for maintaining an ongoing state of quality. Regulatory surveillance is achieved through various tools, including information requests, record reviews, analysis of product defect reports, and product sampling and testing. OPQ maintains the site selection model, which prioritizes sites for surveillance inspections conducted by ORA inspectors. Surveillance also uses predictive, Analytics for Effective Supply Chain Oversight. OPQ is dedicated to developing and promoting robust quality policies that provide clear direction to stakeholders. One of the most important types of policy communication is guidance documents, which present FDA's current thinking on a topic to the public. OPQ policy ensures that regulatory policies and standards are based in science, incorporating benefit-risk considerations. OPQ policy work encompasses all drugs regulated by CEDAR. This includes investigational drugs, prescription drugs, over-the-counter drugs, homeopathic drugs, compounded drugs, and medical gases. We collaborate closely with global regulators when possible to develop harmonized quality guidelines and international standards for the regulation of pharmaceutical quality. OPQ leads efforts to identify and develop strategic partnerships and information sharing arrangements with other government agencies, foreign and domestic, related to pharmaceutical quality. To stay ahead of emerging trends in public health needs, OPQ engages in proactive intramural and extramural research. Science and research form the bedrock of FDA decisions, enabling OPQ to safeguard consumers and make informed, science-based decisions regarding pharmaceutical quality. These efforts yield crucial scientific data, analytical tools, and subject matter expertise, which informs our regulatory decisions and actions.
OPQ research has key priority areas, manufacturing science, product design and performance understanding, pharmaceutical characterization, modeling and simulation, and surveillance. These priority areas help maintain OPQ's position as a respected leader in promoting pharmaceutical quality. To ensure timely access to critical medications and mitigate potential drug shortages, OPQ prioritizes and expedites the quality assessment of certain submissions. Our oversight extends throughout a product's life cycle, from initial assessments before approval to post-approval, monitoring, and evaluation. This comprehensive approach ensures that drug products maintain their quality standards, protecting patients, and promoting public health. Now that you understand what OPQ does, let's discuss OPQ's structure. Before we review the new structure, let's pause and note for clarity that OPQ is a super office with other offices within it. Let's begin with a quick overview of the organizational structure prior to the reorg. Prior to the reorg, OPQ was comprised of nine offices in a structure that worked well initially. Over time, the need to better balance workload, cross-train staff for flexibility, and align our processes became more apparent. With this in mind, we discussed and prepared to address several pain points that would increase OPQ's efficiency and effectiveness. For example, under our prior structure, OPQ laboratory researchers were part of the Office of Testing and Research and the Office of Biotechnology Products. This created challenges in distributing resources and coordinating research between two offices. The result was an unnecessary administrative burden to maintain separate research functions. In our previous structure, drug product quality assessors were distributed among three offices according to application types, the Office of New Drug Products, the Office of Lifecycle Drug Products, and the Office of Biotechnology Products. A pain point in this structure was a lack of the critical skills and knowledge needed to carry a product through its life cycle. This, coupled with increasing submission complexity and short assessment timelines, strained our resources. In our previous structure, we had staff in different parts of the organization that we relied upon to assure the ongoing quality management of our organization. This included learning and development, our quality management system, and enterprise project leadership. Having these staff members in different parts of the organization challenged our ability to coordinate and prioritize the most critical efforts at the enterprise level. Guided by our strategic vision, we've embarked on a new journey of reorganization to perform our core functions better. And the need to increase our ability to respond to changes in an evolving workload, increasing complexity of pharmaceutical supply chains, and public health emergencies. Recognizing the need for change, we're focusing on improving in three key attributes, agility, connection, and influence. This reorganization was implemented on January 14, 2024. It is important to note that this reorganization did not change the number of staff in OPQ, and that all OPQ staff continue to serve within the organization. Some of you may remember that OPQ restructured in 2019 to better align with our FDA business partners as part of the new drug regulatory program modernization. Our latest reorganization focuses more on improvements within OPQ. After much strategic planning among OPQ's leadership, we are excited to share more about our 2024 reorganization. Now that you understand some of the gaps and pain points we identified, let's discuss our organizational solutions, which include the creation of five new offices. First, let's address our research function. OPQ research staff from the Office of Testing and Research and the Office of Biotechnology Products have been consolidated into a singular new office, the Office of Pharmaceutical Quality Research, OPQR. 
this new office will reduce the time staff spend on non-research related administrative tasks, enabling the lab to focus on achieving science and research excellence. This unit will also bring together talented scientific experts to foster new collaborations and tackle emerging challenges. Staff will perform drug quality surveillance testing and laboratory-based investigations to support OPQ and CEDAR during public health emergencies and inform decision-making. OPQR staff will also provide consults, collaborative research opportunities, and scientific training for FDA staff. All of these activities can be executed easier now that research has a centralized office. For example, OPQR's new interconnected laboratories will facilitate collaboration across disciplines. Scientists will have access to a wider range of instrumentation and resources for their research, enabling them to address a broader scope of scientific and regulatory challenges. Next, we'll discuss enterprise quality assurance. We created a new Office of Quality Assurance, OQA, to equip staff with a quality culture, education, and strategy to drive continuous enterprise improvement. This new office will house staff members responsible for enhancing and sustaining OPQ's quality management system and fostering a culture of quality across the organization. Here, staff will facilitate continuous improvement of OPQ operations using performance strategy and risk metrics. Additionally, this new office will support OPQ staff by offering tools and strategies to address individual and collective educational and professional needs. We want to foster a cohesive environment for continuous learning. Previously, the management of enterprise-level endeavors was distributed across different parts of the organization. This new office will serve as a hub for enterprise operations, programs, and projects. This includes enterprise-level efforts focused on communication, innovation, coordination, and performance. Now, let's take a look at the Product Quality Assessment Offices. Three assessment offices have been restructured into three new offices of Product Quality Assessment, OPQAs, where staff will focus on the entire product lifecycle. This strategic move aims to enhance knowledge transfer, increase organizational adaptability, and achieve more consistency among assessment staff. The Office of New Drug Products, Office of Lifecycle Drug Products, and the assessment function of the Office of Biotechnology Products were shifted to the new Office of Product Quality Assessment 1, 2, and 3. The new structure will allow quick response to evolving demands and public health needs and allow for an integrated quality assessment of products throughout their life cycle. OPQA 1 and 2 will focus on product quality assessment for small molecule products, and OPQA 3 will focus on drug substance assessment for both large and small molecule products. The biopharmaceutics discipline will have a division within both OPQA 1 and 2. Manufacturing assessors and inspectors will remain in the existing Office of Pharmaceutical Manufacturing Assessment which we will discuss a little later. The collective goals of these new offices are to improve the life cycle approach to quality assessment, integrate skills and approaches, and increase consistency across product types and user fee programs. While our new offices are pivotal for achieving OPQ's mission, we have the following continuing offices that remain integral to our work. The Office of Administrative Operations, the Office of Policy for Pharmaceutical Quality, the Office of Quality Surveillance, the Office of Program and Regulatory Operations, and the Office of Pharmaceutical Manufacturing Assessment. The changes made to these offices during the reorg were less pronounced and primarily focused on the structure of their work units. 
let's explore the offices that will continue through this reorg. The Office of Administrative Operations, or OAO, is central to OPQ's performance. OAO is responsible for all administrative functions, including recruitment and retentions, travel management, facilities management, and resource usage. For example, OAO staff provide oversight and management for the planning and execution of OPQ's budget portfolio. OAO coordinates and manages acquisitions, including extramural contracts, interagency agreements, grants, and much more. Next is our policy office. The Office of Policy for Pharmaceutical Quality, or OPPQ, is responsible for developing clear science and risk-based policies and standards related to pharmaceutical quality. OPPQ staff develop, edit, and facilitate clearance of quality-related policy documents and provide project management support for policy document working groups. OPPQ leads CEDAR's strategic engagement with the United States Pharmacopeia and serves as the organizational liaison to other quality-focused standards development organizations. OPPQ drafts responses to quality-related issues in citizen positions in collaboration with other OPQ sub-offices. OPPQ is also responsible for developing and reviewing new existing internal policy documents such as Manual of Policies and Procedures and Compliance Programs related to pharmaceutical quality. Let's take a look at quality surveillance next. The Office of Quality Surveillance, or OQS, continuously monitors the state of quality for all regulated sites and products. CEDAR's quality surveillance program includes multiple tools, including inspection, post-market quality reports, signal detection, data analysis, and sampling and testing. Using signal detection, data analysis, and proactive stakeholder engagement, OQS helps assure that quality medicines are available to the public. OQS is responsible for analytic and predictive programs to assess and report the state of quality of regulated industry. The state of quality considers manufacturing sites and drug products using informative and innovative data sources. This allows OQS to manage quality-related intelligence about manufacturing sites and drug products that, for example, can be used to mitigate supply chain disruptions and drug shortages. The intelligence is also used in enforcement decisions, inspectional strategies, and policy development. OQS is a key contributor to CEDAR's drug quality sampling and testing programs. To help ensure that high quality drugs are sold in the U.S., CEDAR maintains a comprehensive quality surveillance program. A critical function of this program is selecting drugs for testing in FDA laboratories. OQS uses a data-driven approach to identify drug products that have potential quality risks as part of risk-based drug product sampling and testing. The Office of Program and Regulatory Operations, or OPRO, will now focus solely on assessment-related process management. This includes triaging quality-related regulatory submissions to identify and mitigate risks and optimize assignments to disciplinary assessors. OPRO will continue to track and monitor workload and performance related to quality assessment and identify areas for continual improvement. OPRO creates process improvement plans and implements them to enhance the efficiency of the regulatory processes for quality assessment. OPRO's regulatory business project managers will continue to be the contacts for applicants related to the quality assessment of regulatory submissions. Finally, let's address manufacturing assessment. The Office of Pharmaceutical Manufacturing Assessment, or OPMA, helps to assure quality is built into manufacturing processes and facilities over the product lifecycle. 
OPMA conducts manufacturing facility evaluation and inspections in coordination with application assessment to ensure manufacturing will produce quality drugs. This includes process, facilities, microbial controls, and sterility assurance assessments. OPMA staff also communicate manufacturing specific risks identified throughout the product life cycle to appropriate business partners and stakeholders. OPMA will continue managing and coordinating pre-approval and product-specific post-approval facility programs, as well as conducting pre-approval and pre-licensing inspections. In addition, OPMA provides subject matter expertise to the development of the policies and science that support the evaluation of manufacturing and facilities. To summarize, all OPQ sub-offices after the reorganization are Office of Administrative Operations Office of Policy for Pharmaceutical Quality Office of Quality Surveillance Office of Pharmaceutical Quality Research Office of Quality Assurance Office of Program and Regulatory Operations Office of Product Quality Assessment 1 Office of Product Quality Assessment 2 Office of Product Quality Assessment 3, Office of Pharmaceutical Manufacturing Assessment. Let's pause for a second and examine how industry interacts with OPQ regarding applications. OPQ supports the human drug user fee programs, including the Generic Drug User Fee Amendments, or GADUFA, the Prescription Drug User Fee Amendments, or PADUFA, and the Biosimilar User Fee Amendments, or BASUFA. FDA collects user fees from companies that produce these products to help FDA fulfill its mission of protecting the public health. User fees facilitate the timely availability of human medicines without compromising FDA's commitment to scientific integrity, patient safety, and transparency. OPQ's reorganization will have no impact on how we interact with industry across these programs. Submissions and communications between parties will remain the same. Please note that applicants will continue to communicate through the Regulatory Business Process Manager, or RBPM, assigned to their submission. We aim for consistency in industry interactions, creating a smooth and dependable experience for those involved. Now let's take a look forward to see what's next for OPQ from Dr. Kopcha. A driving force behind the OPQ reorganization was to ensure dedicated teams of assessors can be committed to the entire life cycle of a specific drug product. This approach means that the team reviewing a new drug application and its supplements can also handle subsequent generic drug applications for the same drug product. This strategy allows assessment teams to cultivate expertise in the drug, ensuring consistency in regulatory actions and fostering equitable assessments across applications. Of course, both new drug and abbreviated new drug applications adhere to the same requirements for product quality. The fundamental principle guiding FDA's approval of generic drug applications, which come later in a product's life cycle, is the reliance on the safety and efficacy of the approved innovator drug. To put any concerns at ease, this reliance is inherent in generic applications, but it does not, I repeat, it does not involve the disclosure of confidential data from an innovator drug application. FDA maintains consistent product quality standards across all applications and strives for uniform actions for similarly situated applications. We do not disclose trade secrets or confidential commercial information from one application during the evaluation of another. We have had success in effectively leveraging assessors' knowledge across products, exemplified by the successful implementation of knowledge-aided assessment and structured application, or what we call CASA, the data-driven platform we now use for structured quality assessments. Although some organizational structures changed within OPQ, our dedication to innovation did not change. Let's discuss CASA and other key initiatives that OPQ is using to support innovation. 
And reorganization is not the only way that OPQ is preparing for the future. OPQ is deeply engaged in internal and external innovation. So let's delve into innovation in some key areas. CASA, which I already mentioned. The next one would be quality management maturity, or QMM. Third would be advanced manufacturing. And then finally, international regulatory convergence. CASA is a data-driven platform for structured quality assessments and applications that support knowledge management across products throughout their entire life cycle. In the past, assessment was paper-based and written in a narrative form. However, this made it very difficult to link assessment history, analyze data, make comparisons, calculate risk, and manage knowledge. The CASA system it advances CEDARS quality assessment of applications by capturing and managing information about inherent risk and control approaches. The system includes predefined risk algorithms as well as data integration. It can address product design, manufacturing, and facilities in a structured format over the life cycle of a drug product. CASA performs computer aided analysis and provides a framework for a structured quality assessment. With the implementation of the CASA system, review disciplines for solid oral dosage products now have access to sophisticated analytics and search capabilities. CASA will continue to expand across more quality assessment domains going forward. OPQ is developing a program to promote quality management maturity at a drug manufacturing establishment. The QMM program aims to encourage drug manufacturers to implement quality management practices that go beyond CGMP requirements. The goals of this program are as follows. First, to foster a strong quality culture mindset. Secondly, to recognize establishments that have advanced quality management practices and knowledge establishments that strive to continually improve quality management. And thirdly, identify areas where quality management practices can be enhanced and provide suggestions for growth opportunities. Adopting mature quality management practices supports a more reliable drug supply chain by reducing the potential for quality-related failures. It can improve the ability of establishments to maintain performance during expected and unexpected supply chain disruptions. FDA recently announced an opportunity for a limited number of establishments to participate in a voluntary quality management maturity prototype assessment protocol evaluation program. This program will apply a prototype assessment protocol to evaluate the QMM of volunteering establishments. Advanced manufacturing is a collective term for new drug manufacturing technologies that can improve process quality address shortages of medicines, and speed time to market. CEDAR established the Emerging Technology Program, or ETP, in response to potential challenges manufacturers face in adopting innovative manufacturing approaches. For example, such challenges might include technical and regulatory hurdles. ETP is a collaborative program where industry representatives can meet with relative or relevant FDA staff to seek feedback on emerging technologies prior to filing a regulatory submission. Members represent all relevant FDA quality review and inspection programs, including OPQ, the Office of Compliance, and the Office of Regulatory Affairs. Through the ETP, CEDAR has witnessed rapid advancements in manufacturing technologies across all drugs it regulates, including innovator, generic, as well as biosimilar products. To further support the adoption of such advanced manufacturing technologies, CEDAR created the Framework for Regulatory Advanced Manufacturing Evaluation, or FRAME, initiative. FRAME seeks and analyzes input to understand advanced manufacturing technologies and develop a science and risk-based regulatory framework. This includes, for example, using new or updated guidance to stakeholders and also working to harmonize global regulatory practices related to advanced manufacturing. So the primary goal is to support the adoption of advanced manufacturing technologies that can bring benefits to patients. So moving on to regulatory convergence. Patients 
quality expectations around the globe are consistent. We must have safe and effective medicines that are free of contamination and defects. While a regulator may deal with one application for a new drug product, one manufacturer may deal with multiple international regulators for that single product's review and approval. FDA works with global regulators to collectively promote innovations that might benefit patients. One such example is the International Coalition of Medicines Regulatory Authorities, the acronym uh, which is ICMRA, there are efforts to facilitate greater global regulatory cooperation. Two ICMRA uh, pilot programs focus on collaborative hybrid inspections and collaborative assessments of post-approval changes. Regulators from different countries work together to identify the best virtual platforms and protocols to streamline approval timeframes and avoid duplicative efforts. For example, FDA and the European Medicines Agency, or EMA, have completed the first collaborative assessment of post-approval post changes with other regulators serving as observers. This work to review and approve new manufacturing and quality control sites can help to better assure the supply of the medicine for patients. As the Office of Pharmaceutical Quality, our role is pivotal in ensuring the safety, efficacy, and quality of drugs on the market. With a rapid changing world, we must evolve to meet the needs of patients as well as consumers. To excel in our mission, we embrace evolution and adapt to the dynamic healthcare landscape. Scientific and technological advancements are reshaping medicine, offering us the chance to drive significant change and improving patient health. This requires OPQ to invest in our people, our processes, as well as our technology. This reorganization is not just a restructuring, it's our commitment to the future of pharmaceutical quality. We see it as a step towards agility in the life cycle approach for quality assessment, including inspections across all of our program areas. This enables OPQ to fully use our knowledge to ensure good decision-making on issues impacting pharmaceutical quality throughout all life cycle stages. The emphasis on a life cycle approach is not just a concept, it's a practical strategy to reduce knowledge gaps and enhance efficacy throughout a product's life cycle. We have the potential to drive positive change in the pharmaceutical industry and impact patients' lives significantly. In conclusion, the FDA's Office of Pharmaceutical Quality remains unwavering in its commitment to assure quality medicines are available to the American public. This reorganization isn't just about change. It's about aligning our structure with our vision and our mission to promote pharmaceutical quality worldwide. Therefore, we in FDA's Office of Pharmaceutical Quality remain steadfast in our commitment to assure quality, med quality medicines are available to the American public. Thank you for taking the time to learn more about OPQ and our organization.